So it's just as I was just relating about when Ajahn Dan was last here and somebody and him talking about body awareness, body contemplation, and someone asking him, Well, isn't that that's not the way I think about the body. I you know, the body is this wonderful, miraculous thing that it actually works and functions and I'm just in a shouldn't we just be in a state of wonder and fascination with the body at all times? And uh, Ajahn Dan answering that, yes, you could you could think of it like that, but but actually it's that's not really the experience of it, and and you won't be free from dukkha. You won't be free from dukkha by thinking of the body that way. And you could extend that to say that yeah, if it was really miraculous, really wondrous, it wouldn't age. It wouldn't get sick, it wouldn't die, it wouldn't get headaches, it wouldn't feel tired. You know? So it's, in in reality, the body is quite problematic and quite a burden. Yes, it is amazing that when we have an intention to move our arm, all the little bits and parts in there can actually move our arm or leg or we can walk and run and do things and we have a brain that allows us to do all sorts of things, but it's problematic as well. It, we get we get tired. We have to sleep. We have to eat. We have to urinate and defecate. We get back pain, head pain, all sorts of pains everywhere: lung pain, chest pain, shoulder pain, neck pain, <laughs> eye pain. <laughs> tooth pain we get pain all over the place with the body so it's it's quite the burden and the Buddha when he's recommending body contemplation he also says stay in the body so we have this embodied awareness where we stay with the body stay in the body don't try to escape from it and stay with it stay aware of of it and try to see it, always see it for what it is, but then stay with the experience of the body to gain further insight into it. How can we abide? How can we be content with this bodily condition that, that we're stuck with? So this is our home for, for this lifetime. There's the three types of home that the Buddha talked about. There's the one night's home, and there's the one lifetime's home and there's the eternal home. So the one night's home is our kuti, our hut, whatever dwelling place we stay in for the night. That's our one night's home. We don't know where we're going to stay the next night. Probably be the same kuti, but we don't know for sure. One life's home is the body. So for this lifetime, this is the body. This is our, our body. We don't... It, it's... It's part of our experience for this lifetime, and everybody has their own bodily experience that they have to deal with. And then there's the eternal home, or the, the true home, the true shelter, which is the triple refuge, the Buddha Dhamma Sangha, is the true home, the true refuge, which is, we think of the internal qualities of Buddha Dhamma Sangha, Buddha being knowing and awareness, the Bhutto, Dhamma being the truth of the way things are, and Sangha being the virtue, the good Kama that we can create. That's the provisions for moving on in the journey. So that's that's the real home. But the Buddha talks about that coming about through the body awareness, through that embodied awareness where we we notice and acknowledge the burden of the body, but at the same time we, we look after it and we use it for the practice. So we go about our day and leave that for reflection.